Hi, welcome to the Coffee Chat Show here on Buzzing Patea, the show where we talk about things that are happening right here, right now, as well as general news, tips, information, and advice. Now, welcome back to part two. Joining me is Ross. How you doing, my man? <laughs> Great, thanks. Hey, you've been yeah. out in the sun. It got a bit darker <laughs> today. He's, he's been out there checking out his suntan. <laughs> now, if you missed part one, part one was out on Monday. Have a look back. It talk, Russ talks about his experience coming over here, what he thought was doing seven days quarantine, ended up doing 15 came out of quarantine and we went into <laughs> lockdown. I shouldn't be laughing really because I do feel sorry for you, I really do. Um, but in part one, we touched a little bit about that you are a three-time world champion. Yeah. Um, but I want to take, before we go into detail about your, your belts here, and I mean, that's the fantastic fair play. I want to take you back to your childhood. Right, yeah. We spoke in part one that you're five foot four. Yeah. On yeah. tiptoes. <laughs> <laughs> on tiptoes. But obviously being a small, a small lad, I can imagine you were quite the victim of potentially quite a lot of bullying, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah. What started it all off was, you know, when I was young and that, and you don't notice height that much, like, you know, if they're just mm. a bit taller. But what it was, I, I used to be like the joker in the class and that, like, you know, and I don't think the teacher liked me for that, like. And then one day she was, um, she measured the whole, cl the whole class, like, isn't it? Yeah. And then she was going and she started off at the, the highest oh, okay, and working yeah. down like, oh. isn't it, you know? And I had gone, oh, please don't let me be the smallest like, isn't it? Yeah. Then they go down. And she said, and the smallest one here oh. is Russ like that. And the whole class laughed and that like, isn't it? And then when they'd finished laughing and she says, oh, and also John was the, the same. But it yeah. was me that was the butt of the thing. And then after that, people come past, how are you doing titch and all, all things like that. And, you know, then they started trying to, to exert dominance over me and that Push sort of thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, I started fighting back and then I had to keep fighting back all, all the time, like, you know. So you're a young lad, you're the smallest one in the class with John people have started to dominate you or trying to, uh, to push their domination yeah. over you and push you around a bit, which was then leading you into fighting. I mean, going to school back in those days, I mean, that must have been horrific for you. Yeah, yeah it, it, because I wasn't a violent person, like, but it was turning me into a violent person, like, isn't it, you know? Because, you, you know, different ones would, would start on me, then I'd f fight back and there'd be a period that no one was, but then somebody else would. In the end, I was the best fighter in the year, like, you know, beating, oh, yeah. yeah, much bigger <laughs> lads than that. And then the guys from the years above, Look at oh, it, he's the hardest yeah. in the year, is he? So they'd yeah. start on me, so it was just fighting. And then, so I, I started getting into, uh, in my, my, when in my teens and that, mm -hmm. I, I started just looking for the fighting, like, isn't it? You know, and started going around with the gang, and we was getting into gang warfare with the different yeah. towns around, going into f football matches, the football hooliganism and things like that. And, but there was always this thing at the back of my mind, that's not what I wanted to be, and that's w what it was. I, I tried um, the different martial arts and that, and uh, th they helped a bit, but then I, I saw a program on, on the, um, the TV about this master's toddy in, in Manchester. Yeah. So I went there and I trained with him and his top fighter, Ronnie Green and that. And I, I loved the, the, the sport and that. Brilliant. And um, th th well, you didn't that just love it, it, did you? I mean, <laughs> I mean yeah, we'll talk about these individually in a minute, but uh, yeah. I mean, when you went into the gym as, as the first time walking through the door, obviously, you know, I can relate to the fact that you've been fighting, you're the hardest lad in, in your year, etc. And then suddenly you become like one of the hardest in the school and all the rest of it. People will always egg you on, etc. When you decided to take that and channel that aggression into a professional view, well not then it was a professional, but into a more um, skillful set that you could control. When you walk through the door, five foot four, and then you're walking into a gym with loads of big lads that can box and fight, yeah. how did you feel? Yeah, uh, I mean, w what it was at first, because they didn't know about the sport, so I wanted to learn. But I'd been doing different martial arts be be before, and um, but what it was with the martial arts at that time, you'd have to be doing it a good while mm. to do you any good, like, you know, it was all too basics. And what it was, I started 
doing it that I wanted to help other people. It had helped me, like, okay. you know, and I, that's what I wanted to do in two ways. If a person's got too much aggression, let them control their aggression. Mm -hmm. If the person hasn't got the confidence, they're um, getting bullied or whatever, give them the confidence just to stand up to the bullies, because a lot of the time that's enough if you yeah. just stand, yeah, stand you up. Ground, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was what, what and then I was lo loving the training. So what it was, I went to, to Manchester first, and I just booked private lessons w w with with Master T T Toddy and then with Ronnie Green and that, and then I joined in the the classes and that because um, what, what what it was when I was young and that I was only young but I was um, doing this kung fu and that and um, what it was the instructor was took took off uh, he wasn't allowed to teach anymore oh, okay. like uh, and the the governor the the top man of the association said oh you've got to take the classes and uh, you know it was too soon for me sort of thing but i did and then you, you know uh, it was i was thrown in to it and that was more of a daunting thing was trying to think of what to do to to you know f with the, the teaching and that like you know how long had you been fighting and training before you realised, hang on, I'm pretty decent at this, you know, I can take it. Because, you know, without being disrespectful to anybody, I, I respect every single person that walks through the door of a gym. Yeah. But there's some that walk through and really should have just walked back out again. <laughs> there are some that walk through and think, oh, hello, but they don't have the commitment, the determination, and they can just fade away sadly when you think to yourself, if you stuck at this boy, you know, you'd be decent. And there are obviously, you know, people like yourself that excel to the highest levels. I mean, at what stage in your training did you think, do you know what, I'm decent, I, I can do this? And I, I never thought. <laughs> did you not? Why is that? Why? I went in, like I say, to learn it, yeah. to pass on the knowledge to other people. And it was just, I loved it that much. I was training and he says, why don't you have a fight? So I thought, oh, may as well then, isn't yeah. it? You know, and, and then I, I did and then I had a few fights and that. And then what, what it was, I, um, because I was the only fighter from Wales sort of thing, I was getting badly matched and things right. like that, like, you know, and I had um, a few, quite a few bad fights, like, you know, which I sh shouldn't have had, like, you know, uh, but that gave me, like, m more sort of anger in size oh, and more determination and yeah, that, yeah, like, isn't it? On. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, th that was it. So then... Um, we got the the TV interested in and that in um, in Wales, and I, I was able to put my own shows on. Mm. So I don't know how I did it. I, I had a dairy farm. I was teaching six nights a week, training myself for fights, and actually promoting the the shows wow. as well. Busy like man. you know, Busy <laughs> yeah. man. I just don't know how I did it. Like, Can you, you know. remember your first professional fight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well. The, one of the main fights was was for for that belt. The, okay. the, yeah, that was my first belt. So there you uh, go. But, the, the Muay Thai. But, there you go. Look at that. That that was British yeah, right. Thai, Thai boxing. That was nice. That was British champion. Yeah. Yeah, that was um, my first belt sort of thing. But what it was, that was my first show in my home in North oh, Wales. Local like, boy. Local boy. Yeah, on, yeah, on the stage. yeah, yeah, yeah. So what it was, I'd been fighting away and that and like I say badly matched lost a few fights and that but that gave me more and mm -hmm. this is what I say to people don't just think you know if you lose to stop mm -hmm. use learn from that lo loss to in improve yourself with it like you know and that, that's what I did but that first show because I used to when I was fighting away and that used to have like 150 people coming to, to watch me and that like you know um, but my first show on home ground on the TV and that mm. and that's what made you, you nervous it was funny yeah, wow. about two months before wh when we'd done the organising for the show I thought what am I doing <laughs> you know I, I might get knocked out in front of my friends and family <laughs> and on TV can you imagine yeah, it you know yeah. it's, uh, you know getting knocked out on TV like so but then psh, you, you know switch you mentally, you, you? yeah, yeah. You, you can't let that happen yeah. and this is what I say to anyone as well if you're thinking of fighting and that don't go in looking at Mayweather and things like that <laughs> but um, you know with the guard down and things like that the main thing is is that you don't get knocked out so the main thing is keeping the chin down yeah, the hands high times, and yeah. then what it is in my last few fights and that 
I was being cocky and that like, isn't it? So, I was going to ask you that. I was going to ask you that. <laughs> so that was the only thing. But it was um, with myself, especially what one of my last fights was against the guy who'd never been stopped like yes and I'd injured my foot in the training and everything like that so my training hadn't been good and I, w I was going in and I knew that I wouldn't just knock him out e easily like yeah I had to show to him what he was hitting me with wasn't bothering me yeah. and things like that yeah. so my hands were was down here he'd hit me <laughs> I'd be shaking my head at him everything that I tell people not to do I, I was doing like isn't yeah, it you know? watching McGregor you? <laughs> look how he ended out <laughs> but, but um you know that's what I was doing but what it did it because like I say because I couldn't use my lead foot so he was ahead on points and that like yeah and he was going but I just had a plan just to kick to his back leg which I, I knew he wouldn't be able to defend just keep kicking that and I'd, in other fights and in the gym and that just five times getting hit with the shin there it deadens oh, yeah. the leg yeah, and yeah. It, it drops you but with him like I say, I kept going, and what it was, I, I was losing on points, like, isn't it, yeah? And then, um, at the end of the eighth round, I was going back to, it was a 12 round fight, I was going back to the corner, and I was thinking, I'd I better change me, me tactics here, because he hasn't uh, he showed any signs of weakening and that. And I told my corner, if they ever start showing signs that his leg's hurting, to let me know straight away. So I just sitting down, it was on my mind, you know, should I change my tactics and that? And then the guy in my corner said, his leg's gone, his leg's gone, they're working on it like mad. Yeah. So I go, I go out, <laughs> come on, hear me that, you know, cocky as it is. It's just amazing, just those few words said yeah. to me how it boosted me up and this is what, what, what it is as well and, and like I say so I knew he wasn't going to last the the you know go the distance so I was cocky as anything and just kept going for that leg and but we counted it afterwards 53 times I'd hit him in exactly the same yeah. place he couldn't walk properly for two months after it like you know he was in bed uh, for a good few weeks that he couldn't get out of bed because you know when your, your leg seizes and then oh, it yeah. spreads to your hip and yeah. everything like and it's the internal bruising as well yeah 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 lactic no. acid and all that yeah oh, awful so yeah. you, you you won this belt what was the next one out of these two belts Which well, um, one? this one was a European Muay Thai okay so um, this one was your second belt was it look at that bad. Well, no, it weighs about 200 kilos. I mean, flipping <laughs> out. Yeah, the, I mean, there, there was other belts. I've got other belts that were in, yeah. in between these and that, but these, um, I, I couldn't bring them all over. Yeah. Master Toddy just He's said it. Truck. <laughs> <laughs> if I can just bring some of my belts over mm. just to show the, the underdog fighters and that, you know, what you can a achieve through training. But what, what it was, we were offered a European title fight. Uh, I was offered the European title fight because it was the last minute thing it, it was. Right. Their opponents had pulled out. So Master Tony says, oh, do you, do you, want, a Euro, uh, do you want to fight for European title? Yeah, yeah, no, no problem uh, in Holland. Oh yeah, no, no problem. But it's for a weight group four times higher. <laughs> Four uh, times higher? Four. Yeah, su 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 super lightweight it was oh, like. It, I, I used to go down um my main fight w was about 57 and this was like 63 right. 63.5 kilos oh that's a huge difference isn't it? yeah 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 so it was against it. The, the top tie fighter like so like i say he was w winning you, you know i, I was doing you know, little, that little, leg again weren't you you haven't you said to you watch my last fight i'm having your leg mate 53 <laughs> no. you're getting 16. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, the, because this was European one, so this was be before that world. That, oh, that other okay, one was a world right. one, one of my last fights. Right. So at this stage, I wasn't cocky like isn't it? You know what I mean? <laughs> but but what one of the things that I learned was to to judge distance, so that I know if you, you throw a punch to, to just to move out the way, yeah. so you just miss. And but then, then I yeah. can go back in and that. But what it was, he was winning on points and that. He caught me with a, a head kick like that, and then he came in, was grabbing me knee and me then he pulled me head down need me that splattered me, me nose and that and he thought this was it so he come in with a big right and as he was coming in because i'm i was southpaw 
so oh, I, I hooked him yeah. with the right hook and that was it nice. but it was funny he dropped down and he got up again and then he goes and he, his legs go like that and he dropped down again like you know and it, it was funny after because I was stunned by the head kick and that you, you know like I say I'd knocked him out and people were saying oh you, you did great you know and um, you, you, a lot of times you can't remember what happens during the fight and I said that, oh you know how, how did I knock him down oh you, you caught him with the right hook oh yeah yeah but how did I knock him down the second time because I can just remember him getting up and standing there like that mm. but like I said I, for, I forgot about him stumbling yeah. over like <laughs> and, but um you know so I was saying to people how did I knock him down the second time and you didn't <laughs> you know and they were thinking you know he, he, his head's gone like hasn't it Do you know what I mean? and it's only when I seen it on the video that I realized what had happened like what about this bad boy? Look at that. Look at that. Now that is a bad boy. Look at that. So talk to me about that one. I mean, that, they do weigh. How did you get them in your hand luggage? I mean, there's 20 kilos there. You, you must have paid for excess, uh, excess bag. No, no, no. This is one thing I've learned how, how to get through customs and yeah. that, like it, you know, with the different things. So they were like wrapped up in my coat. <laughs> So, uh, you know, you just well, weigh people. If you imagine you're five foot four, go on the scales, and you're like 110 kilos. <laughs> How does that work? Well, I've got three of these wrapped round. Me. <laughs> uh, so, I, um, th th that was one thing. Yeah, with with this one, this was my, my first. Uh, it was an undisputed world title at Super Bantamweight. Um, we got to the TV, and that they paid for the American to come over, Rico Rocking, Brockington from Florida, USA. He was unbeaten world champion and that like, and it went the distance and I, I beat him on points like, nice. you know. Oh, fair play, fair play to you. So, you know, you've gone from being like the five foot four, smallest kid in the class, to now being a three time world champion. When you look back over what you've achieved and the way you've gone through things, I mean, how do you feel? You must be so proud. Well, I I don't look at it like like that. You know, I'm I'm glad of what I did, but it, it's like I say, the the teaching is always mm. the in, enjoyment I get. Like, and even in Thailand here, and uh, you know, people are asking, and some girls are asking, I'll just show them some quick self defense things and that, and seeing them, you know, <laughs> you I know, I don't even want to ask about a girl. Can you just show me some self-defense? If you don't pay me, I can give them one. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's just seeing them, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. that works. And, you know, it, that's the, the enjoyment. That's the buzz you know I get from really it more. They interested, you know. They, they just wanted you to get close. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't really care. <laughs> I mean, when you look back now, I mean, obviously, as a, young, as a young kid at school, obviously, you mentioned earlier on that, you know, you were subjected to some bullying. Is there one person you think, do you know what, Sunshine, I'd love to meet you nowadays. Get you in that ring. You made my life hell at school. I want you here and I want you in that ring and let's sort it out. Is there anyone you look back and think, God, I'd love to give him some? No, because what, what it was, and it, it, this is the only thing about going to Master Toddy's gym, he still sees me as that fighter. Mm. And like I go there, you know, I, I keep myself fit on the bags and that, but I don't do any sparring and, and that like, uh, because like I say, if I'm against bigger lads and that, then you know they think oh he's, he's nothing I'm over mm. him so the only way I can get him is by dropping him either with the mm. the ribs or knocking him out so I don't like going to that that fighter thing like that and you know when I've been attacked on on the street and, and things like that I try and keep away from trouble as much as I can and when something's somebody's attacked me for no reason at all the anger that I feel for them because they've made this like beast arrive, if you know what I mean. You know, you ever sit and go, shouldn't have done that. <laughs> well, well, I thought I that was going to be a stroll in the park, now I'm in trouble. <laughs> but it, 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 like I say, the people have attacked me thinking that I've been nothing like, mm -hmm. isn't it, you know? And then, you know, I've dropped them or, or whatever. And like I say, it's been self-defense. If it was on video camera or something, people, you know, mm -hmm. it's going to uh, court a lot. But like I say, what it is, I don't like being that person. You know, I I think of yeah. myself as a nice person who likes helping people, who likes to, um, to do what he can for the welfare of animals and things like that. Don't I'm not the butterflies. <laughs> Don't forget the butterflies. <laughs> and it's and that's the only thing um, about some fighters and that. That to me, the martial art is about learning, respect, and things mm. like that. And Definitely. I don't like it when you you get the the top fighters mouthing each other and things like that. I really don't like it, like you know, because that's showing a bad example mm. 
to others it should be respect and that you get in the ring and you, you find out who's the best in the ring and that's where it is you, you know you mentioned something a minute ago and i want to talk to you about my own personal experience too, about size and about people look at something oh he's only tiny that'd be, be a wall. Uh, when i used to box we used to have a guy taff davis taff if you are watching son, <laughs> yeah. if you are watching <laughs> taff get in touch with my friend when we used to spar he was he was a, a flyweight at the time and i was fighting at middle light like light heavyweight middleweight with spa and he'd hit me like 10 times before I could even allow it but I'm like dude if you stop hitting me I'm gonna nail you and he'd be like walking and go bang at that bang at that his speed the speed uh, and the power I mean he, he never had the power enough to like hurt me enough yeah to me yeah stop. but my I'll tell you what when you have to keep your eyes closed because you get bah, 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 and you like flip here now I mean I guess you know when you walk around the streets, you you must have had that situation where people will just naturally judge you by your size and think, oh, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, what it is, it, it, it's like I say, people in that, um, you know, just say I go into a meeting or, or things like that with a couple of me fighters or things like that, and you know the fighters are big lads, heavyweights mm. and that. Like they'll talk, the person will talk to me fighters and that, like not talking to me, and. But then you know they hear that I, I am what, what I am yeah. like, isn't it? And then oh, oh you're this like, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? Yeah, you know. And well, if we were out on the beer and someone starred on you, I'd, I'd go to his mate and say, "Here, fella, look at that picture. That's him with one world title. That's one with two. <laughs> Let him crack on if he wants. Did you, want, did you make one ever go? Or what? <laughs> I mean, we're nearly coming to it. It's been fantastic talking to you. I want just to, to, to ask you one question. People out there that are watching this, maybe there's uh, young people out there, or there's, there's uh, parents that have got children that are looking at coming into some kind of uh, physical sport like we're talking about, what would be your advice? Yeah, I'd go down to the club, have a, have a look at the club and that, and um, you, you know, if that's what you, you want sort of thing, if it, to, to just give it a go, like, isn't it? But don't get put off when the training gets a little yeah. bit hard because life's hard, like, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Life is hard. So that's what you have to, to, to do with anything in life. If you've got a goal, go for that goal. Mm -hmm. And there'll be knockdowns all the time, but it doesn't matter. You come back, you learn from that knockdown, keep improving like that. And like I say, you don't have to be a fighter, but it's good to have something that you, you want to do, that, something you, you enjoy doing, like, you so, know? I agree. Totally agree. It's been an absolute pleasure, my friend. Thank <laughs> you so much, guys. Cheers, I'll Trev. put uh, some links in the description below. Check out uh, Russ's history. He's far too modest. He won't say it, so I'll say it for him. He's a three time world champion. He's got more belts than you can buy in Big C. <laughs> and uh, honestly, he's got an incredible career. And I will put things about Check him out. And I'm sure if you want to get in touch with Russ about any kind of advice towards uh, the Muay Thai or the kickboxing, get in touch with this, this uh, young man. He really is incredible. I'm going to let him go because he needs to top his tan up because it's awful. <laughs> he's been here so long, he's awful. But anyway, but my friend, thank you so much for joining us. No it's been an absolute all. pleasure. No Guys, Great that's pleasure. it. So, yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you, my friend. Guys, that's it from us today here on the Coffee Chat Show. Thank you so much for watching. Please, as always, remember hit the subscribe button and also the bell icon if you'd like to be notified when we bring out a new video. Check out our members area. There's over 2,600 people all like yourself that are in there joining around having a chat on discord etc and of course with the members area you also get the privilege of a free buzzing shot when we get open when <laughs> all right that's it from us guys thank you ever so much for watching and please as always wherever you are in the world stay safe <laughs>